Okay, so I decided that I was going to try the vacuum bag, but I'm a little worried by the, uh, I'm worried about the F holes in the front. So there's this, there's all these holes here. And when the vacuum pulls, it's going to be pulling, try to be pulling all of this wood into that cavity. I wanted to make sure that there's not a big risk of failure. And um, so I have that first bend I did with the uh, testing for the front. I also test cut the F holes. So I've got this kind of sandwich here. Um, this is the back. This is the keeper back. And then I sort of built up this, I've got the, uh, well, you can see it here, I guess. I've got the negative form with the neoprene between them. And then I've got that test, test panel with the F-hole test cut out with a shim. That was the two by six from way back when. Um, it's basically, I'm just doing a dry fit with, uh, with the, the mold, and then I took some shimmy stock, shim type stock. The idea here is to keep the mold boards from getting too close to this area and holding things apart. So I put these little shims and getting squeeze out on them and gluing the stinking thing to it. Um, so I put the, the shims on it and all these alignment holes. And so what I'm gonna try to do is see whether or not this uh, setup can take the vacuum. Basically, I'm doing a dry run of this glue up. And try to find where those holes are. There we go. And essentially, what I've got then is this whole stack will just go in the bag as it is right here. In fact, we'll do that now. I'm going to move this to somewhere safe-ish. That's safer than up here for the moment. I'm gonna put this in right around there, I think is okay. Right around there. And then we'll just set everything down, make sure everything is aligned. And then I'm thinking I can peel this back far enough to get glue on the outer edge here. And then I can once the glue is on, I can stick this on top, make sure we're oriented the right way. I can stick this like so, pull this up, throw on a little breather, a little longer piece of breather mesh here. And um, stick this in here. and then try to seal up the bag as well as I can here. And then basically dry run here. So, so far those alignment pin holes are working well to keep everything together, okay. Now, this is where the test is. I'm gonna pull a vacuum and hope I don't hear any cracking. So, everybody listen carefully. No, that will not do. So already I can tell there's a problem. My shims are actually causing a bow, which is gonna mess with the adhesion. Nothing is uh, apart, which is good. Nothing has come open. No cracking sounds, that's a good sign. But uh, the shim situation is not gonna work out the way I was hoping it could. Um, 
I think the better option then will be uh, it creaked while it did it but I don't think it was a problematic creaking of any kind I think what I'm going to do instead of uh, gluing that on there square is uh, I think I should rough cut it to shape then I won't need the shim but overall I think yeah there's no crack in there that's good that's really good that there's no cracks in that and none of this got cracky but what I don't know is whether or not that pushed down enough so what I think I'm gonna do I think I have to I think I need to uh, do the rough uh, cutout first get this somewhat guitar shaped instead of leaving it square I think being square is gonna be a problem we'll uh, do this one and this time I'm gonna leave a fair bit more and I'm gonna go a lot slower because these parts matter find that find that drop it in drop it in keep that pencil outside of our needed zone here Okay. That is our guitar shape. Hopefully, this is not a place where the mistakes happen. I hope not. There's no room for messing around. I don't want to remake these panels, so. All right, this is another one of those uh, point and no return cuts. Once we cut into this, we're, uh, we are, oh, hell. I am so glad I checked that. Wow, that would have been a serious, oh, I would have cussed. So, <laughs> here's a case of pay a little bit of attention. Uh, you probably have a hard time seeing the contour of this thing, but if you could tell where I drew the horns, they're over here, not over here. I nearly cut this thing upside down. I was at the saw with the machine on Wow, that was, uh, I almost lost really pretty wood. Wow. We'll take a moment. <laughs> I was just about to start cutting, too. Whew, boy. That was a, that, that's not been that much closer. Normally, normally that's where the mistake occurs, and then I cuss. Man very lucky that I caught that when I did so I don't know if you know but if you want to remove a pencil line and you really really want to remove it denatured alcohol works really well as a great eraser um, it just picks it right up man I very nearly screwed this boy up very very close that was a it couldn't have been a more perilous moment it would have removed, ruined my back. I could have cut a new set of back panels, but I mean, we're this far. Wow, that was... <sighs> All right, pay attention. That one, okay. Horns are on this side. Flip this thing around. Now we can put this together. Man. Okay. Keep that pencil out away from our zone here. I'm keeping it, I'm giving it a wide berth here so that it uh, leaves as much remaining material as possible. Whew. That was very much a close call. Okay, now we're cutting where the horns go. That could have been gnarly. All right. 
ready to do this for real this time. Got our horns there they go. And away we go. This is a no return cut. Now we know we're in the right place at least. And I'm gonna still stay outside of that line because I don't need it to be any, I don't need to cut close for no good reason. Try putting this back in the bag with a uh, with it cut out like this. I should be able to get it to settle down a little bit further, a little bit better. Let's try. Making creaky noises. We're stretching around here where I would like to. Um, I'm a little worried about doing it for the top still. So we're gonna do another one where I'm gonna flip this all over. Okay, here we go. We're gonna see some concavities happening, I'm sure. And start creaking. It will reach a limit, I'm sure. Looks like it's okay, though. Seems all right. Seems to seat okay, and it doesn't seem to be pushing too unnecessarily on this. It's pushing it down here, but no getting around that, I don't think. It doesn't look like it's gonna be torquing it too badly. All right, I think I'm ready to glue then. So here we go. Here we effing go. Yep. Oh boy. I don't know what time it is, but mark this moment. <laughs> there. This gets to sit right there. There we go. You are now ready. Where's my breather? There it is, almost to the floor. Put the breather in now. Send this up this way. Breather is in. All right, here we are. Let's make sure there's nothing in the bag that shouldn't be. I'm gonna try to get this to come out a little ways. Oh, that's gotta stay put. There we go. There we go. All right, going into the vacuum again. Last one. There it goes. Everything's lined up. Everything's lined up. I 
Feel it snuggin', snuggin' down real good here. Feels all right. Okay, it's in the glue. So uh, either it's perfect and we'll find out tomorrow or it's not and we'll find out tomorrow. So that's it. This is, whew, this is a big step. This is uh, step one of getting us into a box form. This is the bottom or the back of the guitar is now glued to the sides and center block. Hopefully well, hopefully very well. I think it's fine. I think it's going to be great. I think it's okay. We'll find out. Wow, this is a big deal. Okay, here we go. All right, good morning. It's uh, the next day. This has been in overnight. Um, the big question is whether we got good coverage good connection to the sides here so the machine's been off for the entire evening overnight time but there's still a good deal of vacuum in there thankfully so that works out well not hearing any creaking that's a good sign pop this out I'm sleepy. Oh. Okay. Take a breather mesh. Get it out of the way. And uh, we're about to see the fruits of our labor. Well, it's connected to it. And pretty well on there reasonably decent. Decent contact. A little like a little tiny bit more right there, but it's not terrible. And we'll uh, slide this all out and give you a look-see. There we are. There's a side, or one side of the back. Oh, there's the back. listening for any buzzing. Doesn't sound like there's any. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Not bad, folks. That came out really well, actually. It came out awesome. I am pleased. That is definitely not coming off. That's funny. So the bend went well. The, the glue up is good. I think I'm, uh, I am encouraged enough to uh, do this again. Yeah, this looks good. Looks good enough to eat. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so we're going to get set up to uh, do the front bit here. Okay, one thing I want to do before I uh, throw this thing into a box and close everything off is I need to get I need to get my name in there. I need to brand it. So I've got my branding iron here. I'm going to go heat it up and we're going to put it marked out a little bit where the F hole is and I'm just going to very carefully turn it the other way though. I'm going to spin this around so I don't get that messed up. We're going to make it uh, visible through that F hole. 
I'll just go right there like that, I think. So I'm going to go heat this up and then we'll be back to uh, to uh, brand it. Hopefully it lines up nice. Here we go. There we are. Good. That came out well. I was worried that it wasn't going to come out very good. It's hard to get this thing aimed just right, especially on a curvy system curvy surface. Okay, now I think we're ready to start gluing. I think. I think so. I'm, uh, I'm nervous because this is my last chance to do anything inside this box before it becomes a box. This is one of those, take a few seconds, really make sure you're ready. I think we're ready. We're, um, Got everything here laid out. We'll route these holes later. We'll route the mortise for the neck later after it's all together. Holes for this are done. F holes are done. I think we are as ready as we're gonna get. I believe that's true. It's gonna seal off this cavity which is kind of what I'm hoping to make sure I'm ready for because once this top is on the uh, that cavity is only going to be accessible through this little slot or the F holes um, and this little slots not so bad but we're gonna have we're gonna have some fishing to do here quite a bit of it Yeah, and then when the when the top is on, we'll bore for the bridge and the tailpiece, pickups, neck. These go. These will get placed. The the switch and the pots. Yeah, I think. Um, I think we're about as ready as we're going to get, so why not? Why not glue now? to be in a box form. Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna let this glue dry and uh, bring it back when it's a box. All right, while I wait for the top to dry the box, I've got it in the vacuum bag, I'm gonna start laying out for the neck. Um, but I've basically rough marked holding it up to the plans, I, I put a small white mark there and a small white mark here to indicate where I'd like my center line to be. And now I'm just gonna mark that. Everything on this neck, everything on the neck pretty much goes from the center line of it. Um, it's fairly common you do that off the center line for the most part. Um, so we're gonna get set up to put this thing on a board uh, and get it aligned with the center line. Then we'll, uh, then we will what? Well, we'll get it on a board, get it aligned with the center line. And then I think I'm gonna throw it through the drum sander real quick just to get this thickness down a little bit. It's, it's thinner at the ends, it's just barely thick enough at the ends, but it's super thick in the middle. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust that a little bit on the drum sander, I think. Yeah, 
That's what we will do. All right. So now we have a block that's nice and thick, so it will not warp at all. And then we'll double stick tape this down. See, we got a little bow in here too. So we'll double stick, double stick tape this down, and then I'll mark where the center line continues on, and we'll use those to align this on the CNC. So get a pretty generous pile of sticky tape here. And, uh, okay. Really stick it down good. And then you off. And then we stick this down nicely so there's enough room on each end. And then through the miracle of parallax, we'll uh, try very hard not to uh, F up the location of this center line because that is what I will be using to align the CNC right there. And we'll do the same for this side. Like that. Okay. Now we can take this to the drum sander and I can try to get at least a little closer to thickness here. Okay, so now we're pretty smooth and flat across that. I'm gonna leave it on this block and we'll get it mounted to the CNC next. Let's see, we're gonna do a real quick good clamp down here. Make sure everything is held <clears throat> nice and flat. That sounds good, okay. Sounds all right. Feels like it's held really well. That's not gonna go anywhere, nor is that. We'll do another real quick uh, sanity check, because this is a hundred dollar piece of wood and it pays to be certain. Okay, right there. <clears throat> that does look good. All right, we're gonna call that good. Okay, so got out the plan, we're double checking everything. The uh, overall length of the fretboard here is um, just about 18. It's almost 18. It's um, 15, 16, 17 and 15, 16 basically. Yeah. Cut 23 frets. Our scale length is uh, 24,625. 24 and 5 eighths frets. So that's going to give the my fret slotting g-code generator the information it needs now now the other piece of this is the fretboard I have on here isn't radius yet and the fret wire I have goes 55,000 deep so I'm gonna cut this at 55,000 deep so it is at the right depth in the center but when I go to radius it I'll have to come back with the fret saw fret saw yeah I'll have to come back with a fret saw and, and deepen the slots on the outer edges, which is not going to be a big deal at all. Um, because the neck is going to be bound anyways, so there's no big deal there. And I think that's everything we need to know for the slotting jig. Um, I've got everything written down. I'm going to go generate some G-code and then we'll bring you back. Okay, we are <clears throat> all set up. I have measured and measured and measured. Uh, I'm a chicken, and 
kind of freaking out about doing this, but uh, <clears throat> this project is loaded with uh, point of no return cuts, and this is definitely one of them. Worst case, if I screw this board up, I, uh, worst case, if I screw this board up, I get to cut a ebony fretboard, which, as luck would have it, I have a fair amount of, so... Yeah, okay, so, fingers crossed, this is the 335 fretboard slotting happening right now. Make sure it's held very well, can't have it sliding around on me here. Gosh, I'm so scared. <clears throat> All right, this is it. There's no more, no more hemming and hawing. It's all over but the screwing it up. So I'm going to mute you guys. We're about to cut. Hooray! So it did it. It did just fine. This is good. I am very happy to see that happen. Oh, hit the limit. <laughs> Happens sometimes. Okay, so we have uh, we have our fret slots. This nut slot will actually be the cutoff point. I won't actually put the nut in the fretboard. The fretboard will end at the nut. And this last fret is the final length of, this, of the fretboard. So we'll cut that end off, cut that end off. That'll be our full length. But before I do all of that, I want to get the taper and the inlay slots cut out. Um, so we'll do that when I draw it up. And I have to break for lunch anyway. Okay, so it's been, oh goodness, a few hours, probably five, four or five hours, five or six hours, something like that. We're going to pop this bugger out. Have a look at the body. Ready? Let's see. Pull this box apart. I, uh, I have a feeling it's going to be great. I think it's going to be awesome. We'll find out. It'll either be awesome or tragic. But I'm banking on awesome. Look at that top. It's so gorgeous. Okay. So now we'll just have to figure out how to separate everything here. There we go. Oh, hey, you know what? <laughs> we did something stupid. Oh, so stupid. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant, Beamer. So, I have a mold. And my mold is completely captured right now. Shit. Sue, now I have to go tell the guys, brilliant, we can recover from this, but uh, <laughs> I figure out how to get that off of there. Yeah, so uh, we pulled the body out of the bag. The, there was a bit of a problem. It's an obvious problem that makes perfect sense now, but I made this mold three layers of this half inch ply. I've got one of them here. And this is the cutout that these other two have. However, 
there's a problem. Our uh, front and backs are oversized, and therefore the body mold is trapped by this front and back glue up that I just now finished, which means I can't get the mold off easily. It means I'm cutting into something. Uh, so I'm kind of, <laughs> one, embarrassed, but eh, human beings, and I, it was a stupid thing. I was so worried about not screwing up the front that it didn't even, I didn't even think through the get it off the damn thing process. And so what I need to do is I need to cut this thing in a way that does not destroy anything. <laughs> body is free <laughs> and we've done zero zero irreparable damage very good all right okay so <laughs> we have a body wow that was funny <coughs> that was a funny little goof that I did there okay Whew. I was a little worried I must admit, but it's clear, it's freed. We're uh, <coughs> ready to progress with the next steps. So there we are. One guitar body liberated from its mold. Next, hey, huh, I broke the mold on this one. Nice, funny, I broke the mold on this one. No, all right, fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you.